people who may have some questions. So I am a cloth diapering mommy. I'm Natalie Morris. We also have another cloth diapering expert with us in the Hangout. Her name is Kelly Batcher. She runs the site SmileMommy.com. So she runs a diaper service. And then the third person you see in the Hangout here is Amanda. She is not a cloth diapering expert. She's a cloth diapering noob. She wants to get started, but she's still got her little bun in the oven. So um, we're going to let her ask some questions. But we're just going to give a quick overview before we get started so that can, Ke Kelly can tell us a little bit about the process of using a di diaper service and how you get, get yourself all geared up for that. Because when I was pregnant, I felt like that was too much to learn, and I didn't even start until my first child was three months old. <clears throat> Excuse me. So maybe you can tell us what are some of the big concerns people have when they ask you about cloth diapering, Kelly? Sure. I think the main drawbacks that people kind of have a roadblock about um, are number one that they're too messy there's lots of leaks um, that they're too difficult to use a lot of people picture cloth diapers as kind of the old school giant things that you have to fold down and they use pins and things like that but what people don't realize is that there's so many great new products on the market that really make it easy for parents to use and for caregivers to use. Um, they are leak proof but also really breathable so people think of the old rubber pants and that actually is a misnomer. We don't use those anymore. Um, so okay. I think the product development has really helped the cloth diapering market and helped make it easier for parents to choose that option. Right. And so what are some of the reasons people choose this to start with? Do you think it's financial or ecological or, um, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I to be hippie-ish? <laughs> yeah, I see that the number one reason is for the earth. Um, lots of people are eco-conscious now, thank goodness, and making better decisions about parenting and what they put in their trash can every day. So I'd say that's the number one reason. Um, definitely, if you wash your own cloth diapers at home, you save tons and tons, thousands of dollars on diapering. And the third reason, which people are getting more educated on, is that they are safer for your baby. Um, so you're not putting chemicals up against your baby's skin all day, every day. Um, there's lots of really creepy things in disposable diapers that parents don't necessarily know about, but once they become educated on that, they learn that it's not the best choice for your baby. Right. Was it? There's a. I can't remember the name of the chemical off the top of my head that's not allowed in tampons any longer, but is still used right. in cloth diapering. That the um, acronym for that is SAP, and that's correct. That's the thing that um, basically turns urine into gel. Um, so they took that out of super absorbent tampons in the 80s because of the risk of toxic shock syndrome, but they've still allowed it in disposable diapers, so a little creepy. I think so too, yeah, and there's all of these political implications on why the government doesn't do something about that, but cloth, uh, regular diapering, disposable diapering is a very big business. Mm -hmm. It's a really big business, but I actually wash my diapers myself. I use pocket diapers, um, and so I have a diaper sprayer, and I spray the poop into the toilet, and then I wash them myself, but you run a diaper service, which is something I didn't consider when I started because I lived in New York City, um, and I had, I just happened to, that wasn't the type of diapers that was sent to me when I started, but but can you tell us a little bit about the distinction and maybe how much you should budget for that kind of thing and how it works? Sure. Um, you Typically, a diaper service is going to be comparable to what disposable diapers would cost. So you're not going to have a huge cost savings if you use a diaper service. Um, if you wash at home, of course, the savings is giant. Um, but the diaper service that we run costs about $35 a week and that's pretty comparable across the country. Of course in bigger markets it might be a little more expensive and of course New York City it's a little bit harder to deliver to your door so I'm exactly. sure that price is a little bit higher than ours. But Right um, and because we had such a small New York City apartment I didn't want them staying there every week so I would have had to pay for multiple pickups per week so that was right. just not really right for me. But if, if we, now, in, we're in a house now so if I could have gotten them away from us that might have been a bit different option right and there are um, a growing number of diaper services in the country so that's exciting too um, one place that people can check for local diaper services is real diaper I believe it's either dot com or dot org I know they have a listing by zip code of diaper services in the country so that's a good place to check 
Okay, and how do you know that the diaper service you're using is using, you know, an eco-friendly or, or at least um, safe kind of washing for your baby? You wouldn't want them using fabric softener or anything like that if it's going to be sure. right in their intimate parts. Sure. I think um, it's important to ask whoever um, is in charge of the diaper service setting it up because um, they will know what kind of wash formula their particular company is using. I can say, though, from personal experience meeting other diaper service owners across the country. I feel like people who get into this business are pretty ethical. So I think you could feel assured that because we're in this industry, the whole point is to decrease the number of chemicals that babies are exposed to. <clears throat> so I think most business owners are making good decisions about what they use. Right. And most of the diaper services are small businesses, right? They're kind of either work at home moms or stay at home moms. Um, Except for in they, California. They have big business <laughs> They're there? huge. I think um, San Diego has 35,000 customers. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That is Big a business. Right. There's actually okay. a Dirty Jobs episode on a cloth diaper service in California. So that's a fun oh, thing to check out just in case you're interested. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of this? What's the gear that you need to get started with um, either a diaper service? I know with, um, you, you know, I need to have my own wet bags and my own detergent since I do it myself. But um, it, we have, there's some gear in common, right? Do you keep the, um, yeah. the covers the, yourself? Yes. So um, any cloth diapering parent needs um, diapers, obviously. Um, there are all-in-one diapers. There are all-in-two diapers, which are kind of what you're using, the pocket diapers. And then there's um, pre-folds, basically, and that's what the diaper service uses. So um, depending on which category you choose, you still need about 30 to 40 diapers if you're washing twice a week um, for, a for a newborn baby. Now, if you're starting with an older baby, you'll need fewer than that. But um, So the all-in-one diapers come with the waterproof cover already attached to it, so there you wouldn't have to buy an extra product. But if you're using pre-folds or something of the like, you do have to purchase covers, and we recommend about six to eight covers for a newborn baby. Um, and then, as you mentioned, the pail. Um, with the diaper service, we use hard pails, but people like yourself who have limited space um, sometimes choose soft pails, which can hang on the back of a door or be a little more flexible as far as where you place the pail. Um, and then you'll need a diaper fastener if you're using pre-folds. Um, again, all-in-ones, you wouldn't have to have that, but Snappy is kind of the leading brand out there, and they're very inexpensive. It's the new version of diaper pins, so it's nice that we're no longer using pins. Um, and let's see, yes, you mentioned detergent um, and probably a small wet bag to use when you're out and about. Um, that's basically where you would put your dirty diapers when you don't have a pail with you. So it's kind of a cute version of a Ziploc bag, if you will. Right. Sometimes I forget those and then you just roll mm -hmm. it up really tight and hope it doesn't touch anything else. Or use the burger <laughs> bag or whatever you've got in your purse. Yeah. Yep. I've done that. I've done that. Mm -hmm. um, and I do not really like using cloth wipes. I've tried a bunch of different types um, and with different solutions. That's mm -hmm. just, you know, I, I'd hate putting something else in the landfill, but I just go for the Target brand wipes. So mm -hmm. do you also launder wipes? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. You do? Okay. Yeah, Is that common are, for people to do a combination of that? Uh, yeah, I think people either love the wipes or they're just not that into them. Um, I don't think there's as much guilt associated with throwing away disposable wipes as there is with diapers. So I think that is um, one reason that people are kind of okay with using disposable wipes still. Um, mm -hmm. But I think either version is a great option. The thing I like about the cloth wipes is that, again, you're not using um, chemicals on your baby every time you wipe them. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's lots of good brands out there to choose from. Yeah, and I, um, you know, I, I went all the way down the rabbit hole when I was thinking, okay, I'm going to really be eco-friendly about this, and then you start to look into family cloth, and that's something that I just, you know, I, I just couldn't get on board with that either. Um, right. And family cloth means, you know, the whole, the whole family uses reusable wipes instead of mm -hmm. toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And um, do do you do does do a does a cloth ser diaper service deal with family cloth too? If a family no, we haven't. To... Um, there okay. are diaper services who are diversifying even into elderly care. 
because um, mm -hmm. obviously elderly people need diapers too. So um, we, my diaper service has not yet, but there are some that are branching into that. Uh huh. All right. I mean, if you're going to go for it, right? It's the, the same sure. idea, I, I suppose. Right. So, and I have tried the Charlie Banana Mama cloths before as well for mm -hmm. um, for a monthly cycle, and I thought that was fine. I think if I were going to be a big like fitness buff, I wouldn't be into that. Right. But since you know, you just kind of. I don't know. I thought I thought it was okay, but since I've just had a baby, I haven't needed anything like that for a while. Right. So, anyhow, well, that's all such great information, Amanda. Do you have other questions? What are some of the questions that are really concerning you about giving this a shot? Um. Well, I. This has been very enlightening. Um. I definitely like. I move between being like completely terrified of it and thinking that I can totally do it. Um. The more I read, you know, the less I know is sometimes how I feel on a lot of mommy stuff. But um, I am wondering um, what you need to start out if you are using a service as far as like, do you need your own diapers or what would you recommend? Good question. Um, I think it varies from service to service, but with our service and I'd say most, you need nothing. You just need a baby. <laughs> Actually, you don't even need that. You can sign up before the baby gets here. So, um, no, we provide everything. So that's the luxury of using a diaper service is that you don't have to do all that research on your own. Um, you can really just meet with the diaper service and kind of get set up and start going. So that's nice. It sounds like it might be a good way and to how, um, get out. Yes. And see if I Right, since there's it. so little investment to get started. Right. How, yeah, how long do recommend. people usually start? Because I didn't start using my cloths um, until the baby had the meconium was gone. I didn't want to, you know, since I keep my cloths, I didn't want them stained. So I yeah. used disposables for about a week or two. And then do people start as, at newborns? With the diaper service, yes. We're able to get those stains out. And to be truthful, um, I think that is kind of a misnomer. Um, I'm sure it's a little more difficult to get out of the diapers, but if you're already washing poop, I mean, all poop stains, it's just that poop is a little darker than normal poop. Yeah. Um, but when the baby's older, it has dark poop again. And so um, I think you would still be able to get that out pretty easily. Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do hear that a lot of moms actually start later. Um, all of my moms start right away. And what do you... I okay, think I and I think I was just a little nervous as well about the umbilical cord. Um, right, I've heard um, concerns about Sorry, that Amanda, as well. go ahead. No, that's okay. I'm just um, you go ahead. I'm interested in this too. Yeah. So what I recommend with the umbilical cord is oh, that's all I had to say. As long as um, as long as the cotton is not sitting on the cord stump, um you should be okay. So if the cover is touching the cord stem a little bit, I think that's all right as long as there's not wet urine sitting on it. Um, you can also kind of rotate the diaper down in the front and up in the back, and that'll take some of the pressure off the cord stem. Um, and some newborn covers actually are made with a little dip in the front that kind of gets below the belly button. And what do you think, I think I know the answer to this, but what do you think of um, biodegradable bi diapers and the, the less, supposedly less, um, you know, harmful diapers? Sure. I mean, I think any step is a step in the right direction. Um, I haven't personally used those, but I've heard good things about them. Um, I think it's worth a shot. I think, you know, you just have to weigh your own personal convictions on um what you think is best for the environment and kind of weigh all of your options. But I do, I think it's a great option for people if that's what they choose. And Natalie, how often did you find yourself washing the cloth diapers? Oh, I still do since I've got, I've got the 11 month old and then my son is two and a half and he's potty trained, but he still sleeps in diapers, um, in cloth diapers. So I wash about every other day. Usually, okay. yeah, unless I'm going on a trip or something and I need to bulk up or, um, yeah, and even when she was little, even when, you know, they were really tiny, it was about every other day. So, but thankfully I have, like I said, I keep the the wet bag hanging on the in the bathroom, which 
you know, already a little bit smells like pee. So it's it doesn't really like ferment and smell gross after so long. Like I need to bring it in there to rinse it off anyway. So, um, but you know, I felt like when they're really tiny, I was washing everything a ton. It was it, I, I have really yeah. spitty babies. They spit up everywhere, all over everything. So Me too. <laughs> I didn't find that it was so much more laundry than I was already going to have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, everything gets all over your clothes, all over everything. So I was always washing. And, but, you know, I did have a bit of a learning curve. And I've heard from other friends who started. My sister had a big learning curve as well with her cloth diapers where people are saying these are leaking a lot. And with the pockets, you have to wash them a couple of times before they get absorbent enough. But I think, you know, there's also a learning curve in putting them on the baby as well. Do you have people who call you and say this is just not working? Because I think you need to stick with it for a couple of days. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, There's a lot of user error. Um, I'd like to say that it's super easy, but I do find that there's user error. Um, Most of the time, it's that they have the incorrect size. It's not that they're really putting them on wrong. Um, It's that they have a prefold that is not big enough for their baby. Um, People get in the mindset of what a disposable diaper looks like on a baby, so they think, a cloth diaper is supposed to look the same when in actuality it's going to look a lot bulkier. Um, so they get in the wrong size and then realize they don't have enough absorbency mm-hmm. and then they need to move up. That's the most common kind of troubleshooting that I help people with. And what what are your favorite cloth diapers? Right. And I had, I, I've, Oh, I, I was just going to also say, I've, I've used what, you know, they call the, in the cloth diapering community, we call them sposies, which mm-hmm. is uh, short for disposable diapers. And I've used sposies on trips before. And, you know, every now and again, I'll switch back just to travel. And I've had more blowouts and leaks with sposies than any cloth diapering. And with mm-hmm. cloth diapering, I did, you know, it, it took me a little while to get it so that I knew that I wasn't going to have leaks. But all the blow-ups up the back always happen with disposables for me, never with cloth diapers. I've had some pee leaks, but never poo leaks ever. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's just my anecdote. Go ahead, Amanda. I was just wondering what your both of your favorite kinds of cloth diapers are to use, what brands and what, what type. Do you want to go first or you want me to? Um, so I use prefolds at night. Sure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and um, I use prefolds at night, and I, I wash those as well. So um, I like the Thirsty Duo covers that go over the prefolds. Those are really great at nighttime. Really, nothing gets through there. And then during the day, I use a combination of either Fuzzy Buns or um, Charlie Bananas. And uh, oh, what's the other one that I have that are Velcro? That something Elite. Oh gosh, I can't remember. But mostly, it's the it's Fuzzy Buns and and Charlie Banana. Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, I use mostly prefolds also. I just think they're kind of the workhorse of the cloth diaper world. Um, They're great. They're super durable. They're really inexpensive. Um, And they're just kind of reliable, I think. Um, And the covers, I also like Thirsty's Duo um, for our covers. That's what we use. I was also wondering if you guys have any secrets. Yeah, we call that like a raincoat because really, Ooh. secrets. Huh. I don't know if I have secrets. I have one secret. Well, this is kind of like a... Um, no, you know, I mean, you get into your own little pattern. One thing that I have found is um, kind of a trick that I've learned is... Um, <clears throat> for swim divers, we have we actually have a boat, so I had to figure out a way for my little boy to wear a swim diaper in the water and on the boat and not have to put him in two different things every time he got in and out of the water. Um, so one thing that I kind of made up in my brain was he wears a normal swim diaper, which has no absorbency, basically. It's just kind of a little bathing suit that sticks tight around his legs and around his waist Um, and when he's he swims in that so of course if he pees it doesn't matter if it poops I take it off and put the poop out Um, and if he's on the boat what I've done is take a doubler which is um, kind of a dense cotton insert that you can put inside 
pre-folds or any kind of diaper really for extra absorbency and it's shaped kind of like a maxi pad so I just take that doubler and stick it in his little bathing suit when he's on the boat and that way if he pees it won't go all over the boat so that's kind of a little trick of the trade that I've learned in my experience. Smart idea. Yeah, because the swim diapers, the, the cloth swim diapers are just like underpants. Like mm -hmm. if they pee, it's going to, in fact, my daughter was in one last week and sitting on my lap in her bathing suit and it went all over me. So <laughs> I should have done that. Nice. <laughs> just jump in the water real fast. Yeah, this is a quick solution. Yeah. Quick solution. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I know you got a little one that's dependent on you for some milk in a little bit. Amanda, do you have any other questions before we wrap up? I think that's it. This has been great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right, good. Well, thank you, Kelly, for, for taking the time to chat with us today. I know your time is limited with the newborn, so um, very, very much appreciated. And if anyone has any more questions, you can find us at CrashTestMom.com or uh, write us on Twitter or all of the social networks. And um, I am a Crash Test Mom, or a, also a Crash Test Mom, but a cloth diaper um, er, as well and student of the craft. So uh, if we don't have the answers, we'll figure it out together. Thanks, everyone, for your time, and happy diapering, everyone. Thank Bye. you.